Hi everyone, I'm uh, Ahmed. I'm 29 years old. I'm a DevOps and a cloud engineer at Devo team. I joined the SG at the end of 2020, so I can contribute on their journey. And I'm so super excited today to be with you. Uh, plus one. Um, I'm really very happy to be here uh, again for the second year. Uh, my name is Aladdin. I'm product owner and service manager at Society General. I'm really very excited to to uh, be here to present Society General journey with Airflow. And so Society General is a French multinational investment bank and financial services company headquartered in Paris. So this presentation, it's not going to be much technical or focusing on technical stuff. It's really uh, a journey description of Society General. It's going to take uh, in consideration some technical aspects, organizational aspects, and perhaps the most important is the mindset journey that we get at Society General. So as you see in this slide, I'm going to start talking about the legacy system that we built at Society General at some level we get need to automate our task and to schedule things. So we use it some uh, based on vendor software suits. Um, it's, it was uh, Hewlett Packard and now it's MicroFocus. Uh, the development was what, you, what we call, uh, what you see, what you get. It was a drag and drop element. Um, um, we can do some scripting and this infrastructure was quite reliable, but on the other face of the coin, uh, we had to pay a lot of money to, to pay the license. Um, actually, it wasn't really programmatic. Uh, so if we then cannot do programmatic things, we cannot do continuous integration or continuous delivery. Uh, we had limited scalability and it was really uh, hard to maintain because we cannot do patches and uh, evolution easily. Um, and on the other side, the providers wasn't really very interactive with our request, and uh, this product was really uh, slowly evolving. So what we did in 2018, um, yeah, sorry, um, that, that, that organized national way I talked about, <laughs> I forget that menu that is going out. So the organized national way, it, there was a centralized team that was taking all the requests about automation and contacting different teams inside uh, HG and that teams are providing some scripts, some, some uh, programs, and that team was really there to uh, synchronize all of that. And this was at some level um, a bottleneck or let me say a pain point because that team is centralized to do everywhere and we get to split that team to uh, build team and another one that is going to maintain and be sure that everything is running correctly. So at 2018, we get a new strategy at SG. Uh, GTS is our entity, is the provider of infrastructure at Societe General. So this new strategy highlighted some good practices like to get the open source first. We can develop in Python because that was the language of our um, uh, entity. We had to provide API everywhere. And as we was working on uh, production banking environment, it was really very critical. So we had to keep in mind that we need to provide uh, uh, solutions with resiliency and scalability. And this, Open, us to, open to us a field for uh, testing things and fail fast in case of any problem. And here we did uh, a study and we compared Airflow, Azkaban, DigDag, and other tools where we look into that different tools. And finally, we looked to Airflow that is uh, there and it was brightening like a star. And as you see, there is the old logo. It's not an error from my side. Just to say that we started using Airflow since a while. And even into, the, into that slide of presentation, I made an error. We was using the 08, it wasn't the, the 1.8. And we use it, the Airflow 08 uh, with Python 2.7. And we realized the proof of concept where we get to convince management to tell them that open source is a good choice and it's a good bait. 
So we get to analyze all existing workflow to prove that we can automate all that workflow and push them to, to a real solution. So after that proof of concept, uh, that same team that did that study, and we get to provide a materialized infrastructure. And the first use case was really very, very interesting and very, very hard. We, we get to answer to um, a calculation risk use case where we have thousands of physical computings and these thousands of physical computer, we have to uh, start them and stop them and to manage all the life cycle of the calculation risk grid. And what was happening with this, it was under rental. So we pay per use. So if we get to execute as much as possible in parallel, we can save money. So we get to answer to that constraint. And here we work with a lot on vertical scalability. We work it on at least, let me say, a minimal security aspect like authentication and securing the API. And we get to work on reliability. We had to create our uh, Postgres cluster on that time. We get to build our uh, Redis uh, multi-region cluster. And finally, we get to do a lot of turning and benchmarking to that solution to make it reliable. But at the end of this experience, we decided to drop materialize it and multi-tenant infrastructure system because we noticed that maintaining, patching, managing the dependency with multiple teams, it's going to be a headache. So we decided to go to another aspect of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the solution and to go to, uh, to, to provide another system. So all of that materialized infra was realized by two DevOps engineer. And I get to work with them at mid time and when I have some time to work to them with them. So we take the decision to go to another solution. So this solution was to provide dedicated infra to a requester. And there is a question mark about that requester because requester for our team means it can be one team, one person, multiple teams. It's for the user uh, to decide how to use his infrastructure. So we reached a lot of, of creation of that of that instantiation and we reached 61 VM based infrastructure. Uh, we provided at the same time 90 development environment. We worked a lot with contributors at Société Générale to, um, uh, to make their journey easy because the bill to come to Airflow wasn't very, very, um, uh, like, was very high. People have to change their mindset. People have to uh, start learning Python sometimes or people coming from Windows environment. So it was really a challenge. And here we, we work together to uh, work on what we call a shared responsibility mindset. We are responsible about the infrastructure and they are responsible about developing their workflow and maintaining them. At, at some level, we have some gray zone. Finally, we um, build at, in some way a kind of internal community. At SG, we have a lot of specific technology. We have a lot of restriction. We have a lot of challenges to, 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 to answer to it. And that's why we built this internal community. And we was pleased to organize our first internal meetup a few weeks ago, and we was pleased to invite Yorick, and he was there, and he he gave a, a very nice talk about the community and how to contribute to external community. So um, the organization, uh, for for the part of organization here, we was working in Scrum uh, methodology, and we had a team of six DevOps engineer, and it was really interesting uh, experience. So. It wasn't finished because in the next slide, I'm going to give the floor to Ahmed. Thank you, Aladdin. So uh, our first offer got a huge success. So uh, we started looking how we can improve this offer, how we can uh, optimize the cost of our infrastructure, how we can improve also the scalability and the resiliency of this offer. So that's why we propose a new service called cloud orchestration. 
So what is cloud orchestration? Cloud orchestration is a platform as service model. We provide the client a fully managed container Airflow instance, and it's hosted in SG private cloud. And it's hosted in multi regions to provide the, resili the resiliency and to respect the to the respect the, the disaster recovery plan. For the orchestration part, we're dog food in Airflow. So we're using Airflow to provide provisioning Airflow instances. For deployment part, we're using Helm and Scaffold, a command line tool that facilitate the deployment of uh, in Kubernetes. For the monitoring and logging, we're using multiple open source tools like Prometheus, Grafa, Grafana, and the EFK stack. Fluent bit for the parsing of logs, and we're creating some dashboard using Kibana. For the auto scaling part, we started using uh, Keda, the Kubernetes event driven auto scaler. For the trigger, we're using Postgres for now, and we uh, we saw that the combination of Keda with the Celery executor is so amazing for us in our use case. For the patching part. Uh, as of now, we're, we're doing it manually using uh, some Helm upgrades, specifically when, it's when it comes to uh, some minor versions. But there is some work on progress in this part to do to create a new workflow and airflow to do this to do to make this part uh, very smooth. So our service it's uh, deployed on SG private cloud. For that. We had to change the organization a little bit. So for now, we're uh, using Agile at scale, at enterprise level, using the safe methodology. And for the team, we have eight DevOps engineer, and we have an, one, one architect and one security chief officer to guide us all the way to the production gate. The production gate in SG is an internal process that every service uh, to go in production, he need to respect some standards and the dev ops uh, fields and even in architecture design to ensure to get these labels and to ensure the quality of the of the service. And there is no quality without the security part. Recently, for example, we did the pen test on our Airflow instance with the version that was for the version one and twelve. And we discovered some multiple exposures. So now we decided to do it in, for the version 2.x, and we will share the reports with the community. Now you have a global idea about our new offer. Let's see how we manage to do this technically. So technically, the two major components in our new offer is the control plane and the resource plane. The control plane is an API that gives the client the ability to manage Airflow instances. So he connects using IAM. And after that, he can, for example, for the creation of Airflow instance, he can specify in the payload the t-shirt size, the Airflow flavor, and some tags. Once the instance is created, we, pro we provide an API in the resource plane that's give the client the possibility to manage his workflows and even to deploy his artifacts. For the deploy for artifact deployment, we will see how we manage to change our deployment strategy. Because in the first offer, we were using Ansible playbook, but in this offer, we were using it's fully managed container instances. So we decided to create some Docker images. Our base images is our SG, CentOS HG hardened based Docker image. After that, we install Airflow and the requirements to create the, the Airflow based image. And when the client called the deployment endpoint in our resource plane, we took all the art or the, the, art the artifacts of the client to create the new Docker image. And this image is used by all the components, worker, web server, and scheduler. And for the API, because for 1.10.12, the API was experimental, so we decided to develop our proper API, and we added the, the deployment endpoints in this API. Uh, with this mechanism, we 
managed to create multiple flavors to give the client the possibility to create Airflow instances with different versions of Airflow and Python. So create, we created Air, uh, flavor with version 110.12 and with the Python version 3.6. And we managed to create 110.15 and recently 2.1.0 with Python 3.7. Uh, now let's deep dive how we deploy once the client triggered the deployment uh, endpoint. So the client can specify in his payload the the repository of his DAX and plugin. He can specify multiple Git repo or even some S3 buckets. He can add some Python packages, some system packages, and even if he want to custom the, the configuration of Airflow, he can add some own variables. So he called the API. The API puts the payload and the RabbitMQQ and our in our backend, we have a component called controller that get this message, execute scaffold to build a new image and deploy the new chart in the Kubernetes namespace. And we managed to send all component logs to SG Data Lake using Fluence bits. So now the client have the possibility to deploy his artifact, but we thought that Every time he changes his uh, DAG repository, there is no need to, to trigger new deployment. So we added a new feature called AutoSync to avoid the multiple deployments and to give him the possibility to synchronize the DAG folder using a sidecar, sidecar container every five minutes. Now with all this feature, it comes the big challenge for us the end of support of 110x is dropped, but it's not a good buy for us because multiple clients still using this uh, version in uh, SG. So we need to, it will be a big challenge for us to convince them to go for 2.0, but I think we will manage to do this because for uh, there is multiple benefits with 2.x. It's uh, the, the development is more easier because there is multiple uh, new benefits, the task groups, the smart sensors. For the security, we hide the sensitive data, data on logs and UI. And for the scheduler, we have more performance and more resiliency. And because it's better, the UI, there is the, uh, we have the auto refresh in the UI and we have the DAG calendar view. So that was all for our presentation. I uh, hope that you enjoy our talk and uh, that was clear for you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Um, I don't know if I have the share or Ahmed still have the share. Oh, perfect. That's my mouse. So as you see in this slide, we are hiring uh, for people who are living near to Paris. Don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be more than pleased to uh, um, uh, onboard you with uh, Airflow journey because it's on the middle of the way. As you see, we just jumped from Airflow 1.10x to the Airflow 2.x. And we are getting more and more bigger. And we have a huge community at internal SG use cases. And like we, we, need, we need all the help even from the community. Um, I will just place a small video here uh, while maybe there is some question to answer. This small video is maybe to give you some overview and maybe the willing to join SG experience. I don't know if you have questions. 